let's let's talk a little bit about uh, your first Michelle. You played Glenda. So tell us a little bit about you know what that character was to you and how you approached it and anything that you're allowed to say. Um, Glenda is as she's always been the embodiment of everything that's good and everything that's pure, uh, but with a slightly more human quality I think in this film. And she she's the only one who continually sees the best in Oz, even when his selfish nature makes that very difficult. To yeah, and, and it's not, and, and by the way, I don't think it's, it's not like the Glinda approach from the original Wizard of Oz, of like, oh, you, I want to go, oh, no, like, it's not. <laughs> no, I really wanted to, but Sam said no. Actually, that does sound a little like the voice you do in the thing. Do that again. <laughs> no, I don't want it. That's how I wanted her to do. You said, uh, this one, uh, one go for it. So she told me to do this, I don't think it's the right way to go. Uh, Mila Kunis, you uh, play Evanora, correct? <laughs> A little bit about about Evanora. Well, I play Theodora. You play Theodora. Evanora is Rachel Weisz, who's not here, who's okay. uh, my sister in the film. And uh, Theodora is uh, is the first character that Oz encounters when he gets to the land. And um, she is incredibly sweet, incredibly naive, and just so believes that he is the wizard. Yeah. And what, how, like, what was the shooting process like for you guys? Is it, was it, was there a lot of, was it like you in, in, in blue screens, or was it, how, how did you go, what was the process? Well, I'll say this, Michelle and I never really got to work together as often as we wanted. Oh, you guys met me, was Michelle. <laughs> it was just... um, but, uh, you know, I will say that I, going into it, thought that it was going to be all green screen and all blue screen, and it wasn't. Um, the sets were built, and they were tangible. Um, Glynis Castle was there, Emerald City was there. Um, the woods were there. I mean, everything really, truly was in front of you. So it was magical going to work. And you, you used your imagination when it came to, like, distant land. But as to what was in front of you, it was all there. I mean, you can't not, you know, for something that's such a core part of, of who we are, we're growing up seeing that movie, and then, and then there it is, you're actually, you're in it now. It, I have to tell you, I, walking onto Glenda's castle was one of the more magical experiences of my life. It was so truly breathtakingly beautiful. I cannot express it. The green in Emerald City was unlike anything I've ever seen. And these are sets, and they were magical. I don't even know what this is going to look like on screen. Uh, what we just saw looked pretty amazing. I think we have a couple, we have just a few minutes for questions. I just want to make sure we have time for audience questions. So uh, let's fire up the audience. Question, light. Uh, he's not, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I think he has, I think he said, I think he said, where's Bruce? Bruce oh, right here. Campbell. does make an appearance. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, right there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you want to know where Bruce was? Right over there. <laughs> All right, uh, this is for Sam. You can never kill a classic, so will the classic be in the movie? That car, the 1973 Delta 88 Oldsmobile Classic, is in the picture. It plays a very challenging role. It's not seen in its original form. It had this really alter its appearance to fit into the land of Oz, but part of its engine block and part of its, uh, I think it's camshaft, was used as playing another role, though. Uh, part of the wizard's machinery. <laughs> Thank you. It's a like Groovy. Um, all right, next, uh, next question. Hello, Lady Thomas. Hello. Hi, my name is Mel. I wanted to know, wow, the echo. Uh, anyways. I'm a part of the Shadow fandom, and all of us have been wondering for some time if that pet project of yours would ever see fruition, or if there's been any progress on that. Because I've heard you were going to work on something a little closer to the original pulp novels. I don't think we, I'm so sorry, I don't think we were able to hear, could you stand a little bit closer to the microphone? Sorry. Oh, that's okay. I said, I really, I wonder if what happened to your project on the shadow, the pulp character. That was a, that's a great character, the shadow. And I've been a big fan of the pulp series for many years, Maxwell Grant's books. But we never got the screenplay just right. I didn't want to try and embark on something with that beloved character, unless it was perfect. We had some really good screenplays, but nothing I thought really nailed the character down the center. That's why we didn't proceed. Thanks. I understand. <laughs> oh, well, we dodged a bullet there. <laughs> uh, oh, we're going to be on the inside. All right, um, 
<laughs> what is your uh, What is your name, sir? I am uh, I'm Travis the Small. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a little bit, little bit closer to the microphone, Travis. Hi. Um, I've been following like the teaser images that have been coming out the last few weeks, and I noticed the balloon looks eerily like the one from the Thirty Nine film. And so I was wondering, is this more of a prequel to that, or is this a pseudo sequel to the books? I'll answer that question. Um, it's really um, Mitchell Kapner, the original writer of the screenplay, took the Baum books and gathered different information that Baum had written about the character of the wizard in the second Oz book, and the third Oz book, and the fourth Oz book. Then he put those events in chronological order, and then he really just made up the rest from his imagination. So it's really based on the book, and um, it nods lovingly, lovingly toward the 1939 great classic Wizard of Oz. All right. Oh, hello. It's me again. Yes, we um, can tell. Yes. Well, um, as a costume obsessee, I was wondering if the shoes are ruby or silver, or if we don't see them at all. Mila's shaking his head. Her head. Her head. really unique to the 1939 MGM Classic, so we didn't have the right to use uh, imagery or uh, original ideas that were original to that movie in our picture. We just had to base it on the book, so no, they don't make an appearance in our film. Gotcha. Thank you. Thank you. The poor guy's going to torture about that for the, he's going to torture himself for the next year. Like, I didn't mean to say that. Uh, one more question. It's time for a couple more questions, I believe. No, it's somebody completely different this time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Classic book characters such as uh, Scarecrow or Tin Man. So, uh, he wanted to know if you'd see other class characters like Scarecrow or Tin Man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, those characters are not part of this picture, actually. Uh, because this takes place before the Wizard of Oz book or movie took place. It's really before Dorothy got there. And it's about how the wizard became this great man and how he became the wizard and how he became ensconced in the Emerald City. In, uh, so that by the time our picture ends, really, the audience is, have, has a, one interpretation of how it all came to be in that unique situation with his uh, projections and his protection, uh, him being the protector of that city. So it's before any of those characters make their appearance. Oh, goody. Okay. Oh, oh good. All right. Thank you. Of course. Thank you. Yes, anyway. Uh, away from there. All right. Uh, one, more, one more question I think we have time for. Thank you. Um, I loved from the uh, from the preview the, the black and white to color of it. The balloon was mentioned. You mentioned some restrictions, Sam. Uh, what other pieces from the I don't know hundred year history really sparked your visual look for the new film? Well, we've got a great production team and headed up by the great uh, production designer Robert Stromberg, who did beautiful work on Avatar and Mr. Burton's uh, Alice in Wonderland and Alice. I mean and so really we wanted to create an absolutely unique look. But it was, there's so much great description described by Baum in his books. That's really where it started. Uh, an original look that was inspired by Baum but seen through the eyes of this brilliant production designer. I also have um, a great producer, Joe Roth, who um, is the producer of Alice and he, um, he brings a lot of experience and, and world building ability. And really that's what we had to do. We had to build a completely original world something the audience has never seen before. And um, the 3D really helped us with that. It helped give us, it was a great tool to create this additional dimension in a place we've never seen. So um, I think it nods its head to images that we're familiar with, but it tries to present an original experience for the audience. Fantastic. Thank you very much. It'll be beautiful. Good last question. Um, there's one bit of last news that we have. Uh, you guys all should have received a ticket when you came in. Uh, for Oz the Great and Powerful. You can take that to the Comic-Con redemption, redemption Room. You actually will get a limited edition poster that was just for you guys who came here from all age. Yeah. Uh, so make sure that you will like to take the Redemption Room later. And everyone also check out Oz the Great and Powerful when it comes out.
out in March. Please thank, thank uh, uh, Sam Raimi, Michelle Williams, Mila Kunis. All right, Mila! Thank you, 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 thank Guys, I'm super excited also about...